1879 on the Oklahoma Plains with young Jeff the Jones. No cares, no excitement, his day spent kicking stones. One day, eating candy purchased from the general store, he felt a dizzy twitch in his mouth that get quite sore. Well, Jephtha found himself in another time and place, and he began to roam. He's having some adventures and eating lots of sweets, just trying to get on back home. It's Jephtha Jones and his time travel in, time travel in, time travel in, sweet tooth. Now featuring Jephtha's occasional sidekick, Dr. Steinberg. Having escaped detainment by Richard III in the Tower of London by bouncing on the nefarious king's hump like a trampoline in order to reach the sunroof, Jephtha runs to the bowels of the East End, where he distracts a blind merchant with a riddle while stealing a primitive form of taffy containing traces of lead. Just as the false and treacherous king catches up to him, Jephtha bites into the taffy and vanishes, only to appear minutes later in another time and place, thanks to his chrononautic bicuspid. Yes, it's time for another thrilling episode of Jephtha Jones and his time-traveling sweet tooth! Jiminy, that was close. I wish I wouldn't have told those twins in the tower with me I'd help them escape, too. Well, they'll be okay, I'm sure. Why is it ever cold around here? <coughs> oh. Oh, every time I do that, it inflames the pulp. Oh, hello, Dr. Steinberg. I was wondering when you'd show up again. Yes, well, it's contractual to a point. Also, I had a preternatural feeling you'd need me for this particular adventure. Well, I'm sure glad you're here. Where do you think we are this time, Dr. Steinberg? All these men around us are poorly dressed. Teeth chattering from the cold. Why, look, their feet are wrapped in rags. They're holding single-shot muskets, and the ones projecting authority are wearing wigs. Judging by the pronunciation of it, I'd say this river we are on the banks of is the Schuylkill. Jephtha, we've arrived at Valley Forge during the Revolutionary War. You mean the lowest morale point during the struggle for American independence? Quite. Ironically, in my time in the second half of the 20th century, Valley Forge is a shopping mall. Still, I think... <laughs> You two strangers! Be friend or foe? Don't shoot! We're friends! Friends? I observe you are strangely dressed for friends. Methinks you may be scoundrel of Hessian mercenaries. I assure you we are not, Mr... Arnold. Benedict Arnold. And how does one address ye trespassers? Well, I'm Jephtha Jones, and this fella here is Dr. Steinberg. What proof have ye, Jones, that you are friends of the cause? No taxation without representation. Ha! Well met, friends! It cheers me on a day such as this to greet new friendly faces. Ah! Yonder comes General Washington himself! You there! Arnold! What are you doing with those two Hessians? We're not Hessians! I'm a dentist. These two, Jones and Steinberg... Our friends, General. What proof have ye? Well... Golly, I'm all out, Dr. Steinberg. Oh, uh, expanding British territory into Canada and guaranteeing religious freedom to Roman Catholics is an intolerable act. Welcome, friends. Thanks, General Washington. Can I ask, sir, what you and your men are doing out here in the dead of winter, dressed like used oilcloths? Well, according to Wikipedia, our chances of campaigning were greatly diminished as winter set in. Campaigning? Like President Hayes? Uh, the general means chances to launch offensive attacks against the Redcoats. And the Hessians. And the Hessians. But that smoke, just on the other side of the river there. And the heated wooden buildings. Yes, well, the British have rather more resources than us. And that is their winter camp. I say, Washington... We'll shoot off more than your wig once tea time absconds. You Cornwallis! How did he have such a clear shot? Whistle blinks, Mr. Arnold. You ought not to hold that candle right over the general's head when the British are shooting. My mistake. I was uh, um, trying to read our instruction manual for these uh, log cabins that we're building. 
I say, Washington, tea time quickly becomes iced tea in this climate. Looks like we're on the way. Fancy a stomping, you mutinous colonial? Jephthah, General Washington, quick, behind these logs. These British be bold. I never thought they'd attack so soon. We've not yet cast enough bullets to fill our muskets more than once for each soldier. We're doomed! Doomed! Back on your yankers, Mr. Arnold. No, Jephthah. I'm afraid he may be right. We'll never have enough ammunition to turn those red coats of theirs red. What? With blood. It's not lost. I know for a fact that- Jephthah, remember the one rule of time travel. I'm not playing the lottery down at old man Bosley's general store, Doc. No, no, the one about doing something to willingly change the past. Criminy, I wasn't going to do anything like that. I was just going to offer an idea. Speak, boy! All is lost! Here's the thing, sir. Conserve your ammunition, General Washington. Like when I'm a-shooting prairie dogs, don't fire until you see the whites of their teeth. You'll have those Englishmen licked in no time. Wyatt, it just might work. Young Jephthah, you are wise beyond your years. Me thinks we'd best surrender. No, Arnold. Not by the dawn's early light. Ready the PA system. I'm about to announce to our starving troops that victory is near. We need only wait and not shoot until we see the whites of their teeth. Yes, sir, General Washington. If I may interject. Hush, Dr. Steinberg. You don't come to the Revolutionary War and talk to a man like General Washington like that. Jepta. When it comes to strategizing in battle or keeping up the morale of freezing, starving volunteer soldiers, I acquiesce to General Washington. However, I graduated summa cum laude from the Harvard School of Dentistry and received my Ph.D. in oral and maxillofacial surgery from Yale in three years' time, so I think I know a little something about teeth. Oh, boy. I don't understand a thing you just said, Dr. Steinberg. I only know about freedom. But you've got moxie and more than a little self-confidence. Pray, sir, continue. Well, General Washington, Jephthah was right to tell you to conserve your ammunition. However, your target ought not to be the whites of their teeth. Jephthah, can you think why? Why, because we're fighting the British. Correct. General Washington, your belligerents are Englishmen. If they have teeth at all, they're likely to be green and rotting. Law sakes alive, you're right. Steinberg, your plan is quite astute. Lads, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Quaker's Oats, it's working, Dr. Steinberg. Fall back, fall back. Look, look, those English cowards retreat. The day is ours, Americans. Someone sew a flag. Steinberg, your plan worked without pause or excess. I hereby promote you to the position of military commander of Philadelphia. Ho oh, ho, this is flattering news indeed, General Washington. I must, however, regretfully decline. My wife expects me home for dinner at 6 p.m. in 1975. The regret is mine indeed. Let's see. Arnold, I hereby promote you to the position of military commander of Philadelphia. Excellent news, General. I accept this promotion gratefully. Unlike our white-coated friend here. Better a white coat than a red one. (laughs) Indeed. Might I say, General Washington, your teeth may be wooden, but your heart is gold. Now, let's see, I just have to adjust my head mirror here a bit. Tap three times, and... Fare thee well, General Washington. Until next time, Jephthah. Goodbye. Bye. By the devil. How did Steinberg know my teeth were false? That's what he done his book learning in. Right you are. And so to you, young Jephthah, would you like to remain here at Valley Forge as my personal dolly mop? Plowshares. It's like Dr. Steinberg said, General Washington. I'm flattered, but I've got to keep on keeping on until I rest my feet again, in my own time. Is there nothing I can do to aid you in your travails? Well, I can only time travel... If in something sweet touches the cavity in my tooth. I don't suppose, though, that in these conditions you'd have a... Why, blessed be, I've just the thing here in the pocket of my pantaloons. 
Just this morning, Martha cooked up a batch of fresh pies with cherries from my cherry trees. Here you are, my boy. Mmm, I cannot tell a lie, General. That sure is a good pie. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Why? Why, you're fading! Yep, it's working. Glad things worked out for you, General Washington. See you on the dollar bill. Kids and bald men, do you want a wig just like the one General Washington wore in tonight's episode? Well, then just send six baby teeth and 75 cents in U.S. currency to WIG, P.O. Box 1776, Carmen, Manitoba, Canada. WIG will arrive in two to six bloody revolutions. WIG powder sold separately. Oof! Oh, where have I landed now? This big old ship is sure taking on the water fast. Little third-class Irish boy, get to a lifeboat. The Titanic is sinking. Oh, boy. It's Jeff the Jones and here's time traveling, time traveling, time traveling, sweet tooth. Join us again in two weeks, or possibly more than a month, when Jephtha again attempts to coin a catchphrase. And Dr. Steinberg laments... I fail to comprehend why you don't take flossing more seriously. Yes, it's Jephtha Jones and his time-traveling sweet tooth.